Okay, 2016. Fly through these lads before I do them, if you will. I'm just going to go through the tips. So first one, do we have a differential equation? We do. Is it an increase or a decrease? Well, the thing in front of the T is positive. Everything is positive. It's probably going to be an increase. So it's an increasing function. And what are the variables? Variables are A and T in this case. But if you look at the third line, at time T equals naught, the velocity is minus 24. So the, the variables are probably going to be V and T. And we're going to be integrating with respect to that. Okay. Um, I'll leave you do the question. I just want you to bear in mind one thing. If you have a is equal to 8t plus 4, um, then you should be able to get dv dt. So get the velocity. And with the velocity, you should be able to leave the velocity equation be equal to ds dt and get the displacement with respect to time as well. That's number one. Number two, I'll give you a hand with the first part. It says show p changes this direction of motion only once in the subsequent motion. So the velocity starts out as minus 24. The thing is accelerating, so it's getting faster. So if the velocity is negative, it means it's going in a negative direction. Let's say it's left. So it's going left with a speed of minus 24. It accelerates, which means the velocity increases. So minus 24, minus 23, minus 22, blah, 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 down to zero. And then when it hits zero, we now have a positive velocity, so it changes direction. To show that it changes direction, what you need is the velocity equation. So the integral of that will give you v is equal to 4t squared plus 4t plus a constant. You can get the constant yourself. That gives you a quadratic. <clears throat> a quadratic that's u-shaped. And what it's telling you is as time goes by, the velocity keeps changing and the acceleration keeps changing as well until it reaches the lowest point, the lowest point of the u. And when it reaches the lowest point of the u, the direction will change. Now, to be able to obtain the time at which the direction changes, you let dv dt equal naught. So you could save yourself a bit of time there. dv dt is the acceleration. So just take that equation, leave it equal to naught. a t plus 4 is equal to 0. t is a half. And because you only have one time, that tells you that there's only one time at which the direction of motion changes. That's the first one. I leave you do the second one yourselves. Okay, do it. Uh, I'm going on to part B. <clears throat> okay, in this case, do we have a differential equation? We do. This thing is acceleration is minus omega squared x. It's simple harmonic motion. And the first paragraph there as well, when you read it later on, will tell you it's simple harmonic motion. Okay, what are the variables? What are the constants? V and x are the variables. W, or omega, is a constant. And you're even told that in the line after the uh, differential equation. Is it growth or decline? Well, the minus indicates that it's decline, so that it's decreasing. However, we know that simple harmonic motion is both a growth and a decline repeated one after another. So it goes up, it decreases, goes down, it increases, decreases, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, can we tell the story? We can. Uh, the velocity changes with respect to the displacement. So the velocity, um, if we started at the center of uh, oscillation, the velocity is a maximum. When, we, when the uh, x increases to the amplitude, the velocity goes to zero. Then when the x decreases to the center of oscillation, the velocity increases, and that repeats over and over again. So that's the relationship. In this case, you're looking for an expression uh, of v in terms of a, omega, and x, and x in terms of a, omega, and t. The first one can be obtained from the differential equation there. Once you have the answer for part 1, you can then leave v equal to dx dt and get the answer for part 2. So I'm giving you a good hand with this one. The other thing I want you to note here is you're told that the particle starts from rest at a point p, a distance a from o. So when t is equal to 0, v is equal to 0. And when t is equal to 0, x is equal to a. Now there's two things there. a is normally used for the amplitude. So what it's saying is t is equal to zero at the amplitude. But we're just going to verify it by looking at the second thing they're saying. They're saying the particle starts from rest. <clears throat> and we know that if the particle is executing simple harmonic motion, it stops at the extreme. So it does indeed start from the extreme. So the particle is pulled down to an extreme, or pushed up to an extreme, and left go. t is equal to zero when x is the amplitude, 
and when v is equal to zero. They are your initial conditions to get the question out. Okay, 2015. Same idea, let's go through the tips. Do we have differential equations? Uh, no, but we have two equations. And whenever you see velocities, I'm always thinking you can differentiate it to get the acceleration with respect to time, or you can integrate it to get the displacement with respect to time. Um, is it growth or decline? First one looks like growth because of the positive number in front of the t. Second one, it's likely to be a, a decline there. Possibly, 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 right? Because the question is really, really straightforward. You can get the speeds after four seconds, sub them into the equation. You can get formula for displacements for both of those. You can get the distance between them after four seconds by subbing in t is equal to four. That's grand. <clears throat> I'll give you a, a, a hand with the third part. On the same speed time graph, sketch the speed of a and the speed of b for the first four seconds. And shade in the area that represents the distance between the cars after four seconds. Remember, for a speed time graph, the area under the curve is the displacement. So the area under the curve for the first one is the displacement covered by the first one. The area under the curve for the second one is the displacement covered by the second one. And the sh common shaded area between the two is uh, not what you're looking for. It's actually the, the area that isn't shared by the two of them will be the distance between the two cars. So shade underneath both of them and the shared shaded area is not what you're looking for. You're looking for the area that one has uh, extra to the other one, and that's the distance between the cars. Okay, part B. We've looked at this already. Do we have a differential equation? Yes and no. We have dc dx equals mx. Now that's not a differential equation that's completed. We need to get rid of the thing on the right hand side, and the thing on the right hand side, the mx, needs to have c's and, c's and or x's in it in order for us to integrate it. So we can look around the question. At the top we see c of x is equal to f plus v of x. Now that means we, that's not related to the mx, so we can't take that out. But below it we have mx equals 74 plus that thing there. So that can go in the differential equation. We have it. We should be able to integrate it and work out uh, the cost function there. So basically, dc dx equal to 74 plus 1.1x plus 0.03x squared. Rearrange it and get a formula for c in terms of x. c on the left, x on the right. And how we write that, um, an equation for c in terms of x, is c bracket x. Just the cost func function is, de temp is uh, dependent on x. Okay, <clears throat> um, what are my variables? So c and x are in the differential equation, or the derivative, so they're my variables. Everything else is a constant. Um, what's happening? So let's see what c and x represent. c is the cost to produce items. x is the number of items being produced. So what it's saying is the cost of an item increases when we produce more items. So if you produce one item, the cost is a certain price. If you produce two items, the cost is all of a sudden become more expensive. Okay, uh, the cost itself is uh, given by an equation that. It's a little bit of complex information, but if you read through it, it basically says the cost of the is determined by two things. Fixed costs, which are constants, and variable costs, which themselves depend on the number of items being produced. And it goes into a bit of detail then. V of X is a variable cost so stuff like energy and materials, which would make sense because if you're producing stuff, you need more energy to put in to produce those materials, so the variable costs increase, and you also need more materials to produce them, so the variable costs increase. The fixed cost then might be something like um, you're renting a premises and your rent every month is the exact same thing. So it doesn't depend on the amount of uh, stuff you produce, it's always there at a single value. <clears throat> okay. So we go back to the derivative, or the differential equation. You've integrated, you've got c, and what you'll end up with there is uh, c is equal to 74x plus 1.1x squared over 2 plus 0.03x cubed over 3 plus a constant. The first three terms have got an x in them, so they're the variable costs. They're the three values that are x-dependent, 
And then the constant at the end, that's the fixed cost. Now that should be enough for you to do the next two questions, but I will give you a little bit more of a hand. Part two, find the increase in cost if the company decides to produce 160 instead of 120 items. You have your cost as a function of X, get the cost to produce X equals 160, cost to produce 120, subtract the two. And the fixed costs cancel, so the, the, the constant of proportionality or the constant of um, integration cancels. And then we're looking for if C, the cost to produce 10 items is that, find the fixed costs. So sub X, uh, 10 in for X, and then leave your answer equal to 3500, you should be able to get the constant of integration. Okay, we're going to keep going, 2013. Is there anything unusual here? You have the differential equation. It's a velocity, distance, and time thing. You should be able to do that. So go away and do it. Let's have a look at the next one. <clears throat> do we have a differential equation? We don't. What we have is a word equation whereby we need to take an equation from this. So water flows from a tank at a rate proportional to the volume. So that's telling me the rate of change of volume in the tank is proportional to the volume itself. Now the volume is decreasing all the time. <clears throat> so that means the volume in the tank is affecting the flow rate and the lower the volume, the lower the flow rate. So I could say here dv dt is equal to kv if I didn't know what was going on, but I actually know there's an inverse relationship between the two or there's a negative relationship between the two. It's a, it's a population decline, I suppose, in terms of water and flow rate. So dv dt, I would say, is equal to minus kv. And you should be able to work it out from there. Your initial conditions, it's full initially. So when t is equal to zero, the volume, let's just say it's v0. And then after one hour, it's half full. So when t equals one for one hour, v is equal to v0 over two. That will allow you then to get the k value. And then from that, how many more minutes will it be one-fifth full? So you want to fill in your initial conditions. T is equal to zero, V is equal to V zero, <clears throat> and you're looking for T when V is equal to one fifth of V zero. Get your time, and then because it's how many more minutes, you need to subtract an hour from your time. Okay, go ahead and do it. Make sure you can do it. This is the last one I'll do. Okay, Newton's law of cooling. Do we have the differential equation? We do. Growth or decline? There's a minus there. It's decline. What are my variables? Well, <clears throat> the theta is a temperature difference between the body and its surroundings. So that equation is going to change a little bit and it's going to be dt, capital T, d small t, is equal to minus k and then in brackets, big T minus the surrounding temperature. So on the right hand side, I'll get minus k times t minus 20 is the surrounding temperature. Okay, you can fill in your initial conditions there and work that out, it should be okay. And again, just be aware of the, the part two. Find the temperature after a further 10 minutes or after a further 15 minutes. <clears throat> so that's the temperature after 25 minutes in total. Pause it, do it, correct it. Come back to me if you have any hassle. Okay, final one. Is there a derivative or a differential equation, I should say? There's not. We're going to have to work that out. Okay, <clears throat> uh, we'll read through it. The resistance to motion is that. Um, so from what I can see, it's just going to be F equals MA. So A equals uh, minus MKV squared over M. So A equals minus KV squared. Minus because it's a resistance to the motion, it causes a deceleration. Uh, and the M's cancel. K is a constant. <clears throat> and v is the velocity. So what are my variables? Well, they're either v and t or v and x, depending on what we need. And once you have the uh, differential equation, you should be able to do the rest of it. Now that's it, gents. So like I said, it should take you between 40 minutes and an hour. Go through all of them, make sure you can do all of them, and um, come back to me if you have any problems with any of them.